Okay, I'm going to try and do a uh, small video on the PM10 and the PM10F, which are automatic punching machines for the uh, standard gauge uh, punch card machines and the fine gauge punch card machines. Fine gauge has a 30 stitch repeat and the standard gauge of course has a 24 stitch repeat and by repeat I mean it will actually advance across the card either by moving it or by when you punch it will also move. So you can punch and move blank spaces interspersed across a card. Um, it's actually incredibly useful. Um, it's as far as I'm concerned, some of the best things since sliced cheese. <laughs> um, these things are just fantastic. Um, the only main difference between these two machines, other than the the advance uh, number of advances that it will advance across, this one will advance across, of course, 24. This one will, of course, advance across 30. Um, but other than that particular feature, the main difference is the actual punch. And let's see if I can get this zoomed in. So I can actually show this relatively well. Okay. Eh. There we go. Okay, now the uh, punch comes down and enters the hole and actually goes in there quite a ways, as you can see. Um, the die, which is the metal piece that has the hole in it down here, is uh, of course crucial in fit. And if it's not placed right, you'll actually feel it kind of scrape. Um, I've never had that problem with, with my PM10. However, with my PM10F, I have had that problem multiple times. Um, I've had to tighten it up repeatedly. Okay, so I can get, show you the difference in size here with these guys. You can see this particular punch is much smaller than the other one. Um, I've got it set really well at the moment, and it's it's not scraping at all. But I've had to actually uh, adjust it, and you don't actually adjust it from the top, even though you can see the little screws up in there. See that screw there and that screw there? And there are two more here at the front edge. You actually do those from underneath. Let me go back out here and we will turn this guy over and we will take a look at his bottom. Now, of course, this is the reservoir where the punched out holes go, but inside is where you get to the die adjustment. See those four nuts in there? Um, one of them actually will be pretty secure and I typically don't move it unless I absolutely have to when I have to adjust one. I adjust, I unscrew the other two very slightly and have the punch held through and just kind of move it up and down a little bit until I get it in place and then tighten the opposite nut and then tighten the other two in an X fashion. Um, typically, you know, that's pretty easy to do without having to get anything else out of whack. You don't have to take the bottom off. You don't have to do anything else. It's accessible straight through here. Um, so far, that's the only adjustment I've ever had to make to either one of them. But when I first got it, the PM10F was stuttering. Um, you could press down and it wouldn't come all the way back up. It would stutter in its punches. And that's all I did was adjusted the die and it just moves it around in orientation just minutely. You won't actually see it move, um, but it moves it around just enough that it meets and the punch is able to go through it very, very easily. 
Um, I've been told that, yes, you can buy the punches for these guys and the dies from um, a couple of the dealers, but you have to know exactly what to ask for, and you have to be very specific. And I would not just take the first thing. I would double confirm what you're ordering from them because, you know, these guys, I've never heard of anybody needing one, but uh, it's very possible. They do quite a bit of work, and they're punching through some pretty tough mylar, and over time, I'm sure they will get dull. Um, neither one of mine have ever given me any trouble with punching. Um, they punch like champs, and I have punched well over probably 120 cards at this point, and uh, on each of them, actually, and they actually punch wonderfully. Um, as for how they actually work, let's see if I can get this thing turned off real quick. And yeah, I just have a short piece, and I'm going to show you. Normally, I feed mine in from the front, but you can feed it in either way. Um, there are little teeth that tractor. Let's see if I can get it turned in. There are little teeth that tractor. See these little tractors right in there? And they tractor in to the tractor holes on the side and actually allow you to advance it one line at a time. And notice it comes out the back. So you can actually put a roll of, uh, of punch card material in there and not even have to cut it off the roll and just keep right on punching if you really wanted to. So you can make really long cards. I don't particularly like them really long because they're hard to store. And I don't like having them incredibly curled up because they might have a tendency to run themselves through the card reader on your machine. I've had one try to do that and it's not a pretty sight. But it's very, very simple. Sorry, I ran into progress there. It ran into another piece of equipment. But just that quickly, and it punches a line of holes. And you can also, in holding the uh, trigger back, you can actually advance it up and down a single line and punch a long line in one single column. So you can keep it from actually advancing at any point by doing that. And I actually, in, in several of the uh, cards that I've had to punch, there were zigzagging lines up the card, and that made it absolutely wonderful because I could hold it in position and punch two or three straight up and then let it advance one and then punch two or three straight up and, and so on and so forth. And that works incredibly fast and incredibly easy. These things are well worth the price for them. Um, I would not sell mine for love nor money. <laughs> um, if you can get your hands on one for a punch card machine, they are well worth the price. Um, at this point, you know, finding them is the hard thing to do because people who have them, um, if they're still using their machines, they're not going to let them go. These things are incredibly useful. And, you know, if you can find one, I would say jump on it. Um, most of them, you know, that I have seen have run anywhere from, you know, 80 bucks to, say, 150 And that's actually probably pretty good because, you know, you're not going to find them just everywhere. So, you know, some of the PM10Fs will be completely blue, like, like the back color. Um, but this particular one is just the, uh, just the advanced piece that's actually the blue color. Everything else other than the punch and the die is roughly basically the exact same. I hope that helps anybody who's got questions about them.